In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. A couple of years ago, um, when AI started coming out, we took a trip to, this was for a high school retreat, we took a trip with the high schoolers to the monastery, and uh, they said, why don't we have some questions? So I said, great, let's, let's talk. So they got like 10 or 11 of them, and we're sitting in a circle you know, next to the, you know, if anybody's been to the monastery, they have the lake. Um, and we're sitting next to the lake, and I, you know, said, okay, we're going to spend some time here together. So I said, well, well, what questions do you have? They said, Wuna, we, um, we saw this video on TikTok. And just from the beginning, you know, I was like, oh, great, here we go. We saw this video on TikTok, and somebody had put in, like, the Bible into the, I guess, the AI, and said, okay, what does an angel look like? So made an image of like this scary kind of figure that had eyes everywhere, and it looked in the the guy the boy was like, does this is this how angels look in heaven? Because if they do, I don't want to go to heaven." And I just kind of thought to myself, "We're in for a good, long evening." Um, <laughs> the point of the story is that uh, with all of this new technology, and actually with any advancement of any technology, the ability to propagate a lie is increased significantly. You know, um, those, I guess, of you who are servants, um, of when uh, Matthias had shared with us uh, a, 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 like a, a funny poem that he made with AI and shared it to the servants about like the iPads and the things that were taken from his office. And it was all completely AI generated, but it sounded exactly like Abuna. Um, and this is kind of scary because, you know, it can be easily manipulated to propagate lies. And if you think about like the, you know, Satan, he's the father of all lies. And I believe that when we, you know, um, when we s come to the end of time, there will be more people condemned in Hades because of lying than any other sin. Uh, and maybe all of them combined. Because it seems so easy, we look at it as being something that's so trivial, but it's something that's very great. If you look in the passage of today, the Pharisees, they said about the Lord Jesus Christ that he cast out um, Beel, uh, a demon by a demon. You know, so this was, of course, was a lie. Um, <coughs> and like I said, like the ability to propagate lie has just increased with any advancement. So the, I want to remind us of a couple of verses that are in Scripture about testing all things. We shouldn't believe everything we see or hear, especially those things that are online, even if you know the person who's sending them, but you don't know the circumstance, you don't know their emotion, you don't know um, what they're really thinking. So even this can be misunderstood and then be later propagated as a lie, although it was a misunderstanding on my account. Uh, and St. John reminds us, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So they told us this from the very first century, that there are people who become, after us, the apostles, that begin to preach a lie, again, and we have to be able to distinguish whether it's a lie or it's not. So very quickly this morning, we'll speak about evaluating and exposing a lie. Um, but before I do this, there are just things I need to mention uh, before we, we go on. Um, first of all, a lie is anything that confuses or deludes the truth. So anything that makes the truth unclear is a lie. Um, and the other thing we need to understand, we need to be able to distinguish a lie from a liar, right? Um, the lie is the sin, you know, and somebody who, who says this or uses this is maybe a liar. But we have to keep in mind our job as Christians is to win everyone, right? So judging a liar as a liar and putting them in a separate category is not going to win them. Right, so we need to keep this in mind that we need to make the distinction between the person and uh, and the sin. Also, sometimes it's very difficult to like um, ascertain the originator of a lie, and sometimes many people will spend a lot of time thinking about or like investigating where did this lie start. This is very common among like the teenagers. Oh, somebody sp uh, spread a rumor, or somebody said something about online. Okay, where did this start? And you have no idea where it started because there are many people they create alias accounts and it's not really them so who is this really and i can just spend hours and hours and in the end i have no you know uh conclusion anyways um 
Another thing we need to be careful of when we speak about lies and liars is of judging one another. And as I said, if we judge someone, we can't save them. So we have to be very careful not to judge. And lastly, um, don't give anything or anyone more credence than God. Don't give anyone or anything more credibility in your mind and in your heart than God. Okay? Um, those things aside, if you just came in, you know, those few things that I said are important. So when you go home, go back to just these few points before, uh, so you understand where I'm coming from. So how do we is it that we evaluate a lie? <coughs> Number one, you'll find a lie is often based on an unfounded assertion or accusation. There's no evidence for it, but it's just, an maybe oftentimes just an opinion. But people say it as if it's a fact, but it's actually just a simple opinion. Like today in the story, it says that this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub. What's the evidence they have? The evidence was that the demon was cast out. But is this really evidence? All right? It's not really evidence. The, the demon left, but it doesn't, you know, it can't mean that the demon was cast out uh, by another demon. So it's unfounded, right? It's just an assertion or accusation meant to discredit a person. So oftentimes lies do this. They just unfounded accusations to meant to discredit a person. Um, uh, because they don't agree with what they're saying. So the first thing you'll find is it's unfounded, right? The second thing is uh, we'll need to ask ourselves, what does it measure or how does it measure to the truth we already know? How does this claim or this assertion measure to the truth that we already know as being something that's true? Um, <coughs> you know, how does it that we know, for example, if I said my Tonya is green, you look at me and say, well, you're colorblind. Why? Because it's already known, and everywhere the world agrees that this color is white, right? So this is a known fact that this is something that's white. So when something comes and says otherwise, then that becomes like a lie, right? So we, we know it by some kind of reference. So if we know the truth, then we need to measure every other assertion based on that truth. And we shouldn't void the truth we know no matter who or what proclaims it. Sometimes we're very easily manipulated and we're very easily, we can change our mind about what is true and what's not true because somebody important that, or that we think is important said it. Or that many people are saying it. Do you know one of the things about the lies that are being propagated these days, and there are many, is the people propagating the lies, what's their strategy? If I say it enough, people will begin to begin to believe the lie. Actually, the same thing will happen with us, my beloved, which is very scary and we have to be very cautious. If I repeat a lie to myself enough, one day I will believe in the lie that I'm propagating and thinking about to myself. This is what makes lying extremely dangerous. Look what St. Paul says to the Galatians. Uh, when he preached to them, he found that they started turning away from the truth very quickly. And he says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have told you before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be accursed. You know the truth of the gospel that I proclaim to you. So anything contrary to this, let him be accursed, or anathemized, or you separate yourself from, uh, uh, from them. So how do we measure the truth, or how do we measure the lie? Is by the truth that we already know. All right. So any assertion or claim, you measure it against the truth that we already know. Number three is the reasonability of the assertion or the claim. Is it reasonable? How does the assertion or accusation interact with reality that we observe or experience? In the, ca in the case of today's story, where they accuse Christ of casting out the demon by Beelzebub, did, um, uh, did the high priest see anything in the Lord that would suggest he is a ruler of a demon? In his behavior, in his act, did he maybe send demons to possess people? Maybe then we would say he's a leader of the demons, right? Did he see, like, the Lord walking with the demons behind him? No, he didn't see this, right? So the fact that he's claiming that he is the leader of a demon is just because that's something he believes, because he doesn't agree with what he's teaching, right? So, uh, also, just like today, if somebody were as a little boy were came to you and says, you know what, uh, I feel like I can fly like Superman. 
Are we going to be like, yeah, good job, great. Let's, why don't you try jumping off the car first, and if you make it, then you can jump off the top of the roof. Do we do that? No. We say, no, look, how you to come back to the reality? You know, there's no such thing. Superman is fake, and no one can fly like that. Only the birds, but we're not created to be able to, be able to fly. Right? So this claim that he thinks he's Superman, we say, no, this is absurd, and it's just childlike thinking. Right? Just like another time, somebody comes to say, men can get pregnant. Okay, this is an absurd claim because this is physiologically impossibility, right? So we have to be able to distinguish this, that this is a lie because it's physiologically impossible, right? You can twist and turn however you want, but the lie is still a lie and the truth is still the truth, okay? So what is the reasonability of this? And if it's unreasonable by what we experience and see in reality, then we must discredit it as being something that's an absurd claim or assertion. Number four, is there a bias or a personal motive? What's behind it? What is behind it? There's a story in the Old Testament about King Ahab, who was probably the worst king in the, uh, in the south, the kingdom of Judah. And uh, <coughs> he was, uh, there was a king in the north who wanted to go to battle to get some piece of land back. So he says, okay, King Ahab, would you come to war with me? He says, I'll go with you under one condition that if God approves, because if God approves, then you will go to war. And this again, he's a wicked person, but he's doing this just because it's typically what the kings of the south did. Uh, so he said, okay, let's ask some of the prophets. So he said, I have 400 prophets. Let me ask them. And he went to ask the prophets and they said, go for it. Because that's all they do. They just support, the, the king supports them. So they're not going to disagree with him. So they said, go for it. You will have victory. So the king said, I don't know, this sounds a little fishy. Is there not one among them who really is a true prophet? And the name of this, yes, there's one, his name is Micaiah, and, uh, but I don't like him because he always prophesies against me. All right. So what is the purpose of the 400 false prophets? It's simply to clap for him and cheer for him and say, go do whatever it is that you want. There's a bias, right? So all of these false prophets, they're all liars, right? Because there's a bias behind it. Right? Is there a bias behind why people are doing what they do or claiming these claims? It's something we need to know and understand. Is there a personal motive? Right? If I say this lie, is there some kind of kickback that the person's receiving? The same things from uh, in the story of Bell in the book of Daniel, where there was this you know statue, this idol that they were worshiping, and they would come and they would put food for the idol, a lot of food, tons of food. And then the idol, they'd say the idol would eat it every night. And Daniel said, this seems a little silly. It's unreasonable, right? There must be something else because statues, they don't need to eat or drink. So the king's like, what do you mean? This is our God. He must do this. We do this every day. So he said, Wa watch. Okay, so he went. He took everybody out. He put some sand on the floor of the, without anybody knowing around the idol. And then he shut the, the door. They put the food in, made the sand smooth. And the next day they came and they found all of the food gone. And the king said, look, they finished all the food. This is a true God. And I said, Daniel said, wait, wait, wait. Look in the floor. And they said, saw what? What did they see? Anybody remember? Footsteps, right? They saw footsteps of many adults and children alike. So what did they find? They found the, the priest of this you know, uh, God or this you know, false God or this idol came in with them and their families every night and they had a hearty meal. Right? And they left nothing. Every night they would eat and drink on the king's expense because of this idol. Right? So they lied to the king that this is Aslan a god, this is a god, and it's not a god. But we lied because what? There's something personal behind it. I gained from it. So is there a bias or not? Number five is, does it make God a liar? When we're evaluating a lie, you'll find oftentimes the lie will make God a liar. Why? Because in order for you to believe a lie, you must believe that the truth is a lie. Okay? So, it will make God a liar. When Satan came to tempt Eve, what did he say to her? He said, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? What's he doing here? He's planting the seeds in her head that God is a liar. God's lying. Although he's the liar. Right? But the lie always has to make the truth as if it's a lie. Right? So that's what makes it so challenging for us. Okay, which who is telling the truth and who is not? Who is the real liar and who is the truth? Um, <coughs> remind you what St. Paul said, let God be true and every man a liar. 
Let God be true and every man a liar. This means that if the whole world, if all of humanity said a lie, we as Christians should believe God over all of humanity. This is hard. If it's just my group of friends say a lie, I would be more inclined to believe it because I don't want to lose their friendship. But God, the but St. Paul tells us, let every man be a liar and God be true. Our job is to follow God and his truth and not humanity. And uh, St. John's letter, uh, his first letter, he says, he who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself he who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has bore to his son. So the fact that they, the, you know, we don't believe in the testimony of the son of God, we make God a liar because he's coming to proclaim the truth and we don't believe him or choose not to believe him. Therefore, we say that he is a liar. We not say it verbally but by our actions and in our mind, we say he's not telling us the truth. He doesn't have our best interest in mind. <coughs> Sometimes a friend might uh, try to convince you of something, for example, your parents or your faith prohibit by accusing them of lying to you. And they will claim that they are more concerned about you than your parents or even your faith. <coughs> and then they'll try to convince you that your parents or God don't have your best interests in mind because they don't want you to have fun, they don't want you to experience these things in life, but you should just, you know, kind of do it. This is why I always tell the young ones when they, uh, when they have these kind of disagreements with their friends about maybe what it's right and what it's wrong. There's two ways to say something. You know, you can tell your friends, yeah, my parents said I can't go, or my parents said I shouldn't do this. The, what's the response of this? Oh, this is easy, you know? Okay, well, we can hide, we can get around your parents. You can sneak out, you can, we can do it at school, we can do this. I even had some, many, some, uh, somebody once and came and told me in confession uh, that he wasn't allowed or she wasn't allowed to have phone. So one of his friends had an extra phone and they went and activated the phone and gave it to them while they were in school and took it every day. So they spent a long time. The kid had a phone during school and would never come home with it and the parents had no idea that the kid was doing this. So they find a way. They'll find a way to go around whatever you say. But would the scenario be different if you said, what? Well, no, I don't believe I need this now and I don't want this now. What's the difference? It comes from conviction. When we say the truth with conviction, that's it. That's the end of the discussion. But if I say it and I kind of I put it on somebody else, then, then we always find a way around whatever it is that you put in the way. Lastly, we uh, evaluate the lie <coughs> uh, and by knowing that the lie often is intolerant of dissent, often is intolerant of something going against the lie. Um, any change, anything, that, uh, intolerance is any change or uh, to any tolerance or any, anything that challenges uh, their assertion or claim. Uh, when the Lord was questioned at his trial, you know, about uh, in front of the high priests, um, they asked him about his doctrine. What is it that he was teaching? And the Lord responded by telling them, Ask those who have heard me, they will tell you, I spoke nothing in secret. Ask them. And he said, Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me uh, what I have said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And then it says that the officer struck the Lord Jesus and said to him, Do you answer the high priest like that? And they struck him. And what did the Lord answer? He says, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Why did he strike him? Did he strike him because he said something evil? No. He struck him because he doesn't like what he's saying. He didn't like the dissent. He didn't like the, okay, we're here to accuse you falsely and to get rid of you, and you're not you're going to speak to the high priest like that. Let me, you know, slap you. Right? And this is what you'll find. Oftentimes the lies, if we don't believe the lie, they get more aggressive and get more violent. Why? Because again, if I can't convince you by the lie, then I'll try to convince you to get you to fear and to be scared. These are all things that we can evaluate a lie. How do we respond to a lie really quickly? Number one, we need to take the thought or the lie captive. Take it captive. 
Look what St. Paul says. He says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. When we bring a thought into captivity, what does this mean? It allows us to be able to evaluate the thought. We say, okay, I'm not going to let this thought run away. I'm not going to run away with this thought, but I'm going to bring it into captivity and begin to evaluate this thought. Is it a lie or is it not? Is it true or is it not? Don't follow the lie or allow it to proceed into the will. Once we think about the lie and we accept the lie, the lie will eventually make it to our heart and then to our will. We begin to fulfill or live out this lie. Number two, we need to evaluate. What do the following say regarding the assertion or claim? Okay, I said before we need to evaluate by some kind of truth. Okay, so what does scripture say about this assertion or claim? Okay, what does the church say about this assertion or claim? What does my experience say about this assertion or claim? And what does reality say about this assertion or claim? What do we see? Don't let people tell you what you ought to believe, contrary to what you observe, you know? If you say somebody comes to you and says, oh, this person is mean and they're very, you know, reckless and all of this, but yet you see a kind person in front of you, pay no attention to the lie, right? Pay no attention to it. Deal with the person as they present to you. Maybe there's some other issue with that other person, but with me, everything is fine. So I treat them kindly. Um, I should treat any of everybody kindly, but I have nothing against them. Number three is don't share the lie. Do not share the lie. The power of a lie lies in its ability to propagate easy. And again, with the uh, you know, advancement of technology and social media, it's very easy to share lies. At a click of a button, you can share it with millions of people, right? And again, I want to warn you, like, don't believe everything you hear or see online. Things, there are lies circulating all over the internet. And as you know, the lie propagates faster than the truth. You know, they say that a lie or bad news propagates five times faster than something that is good or true. So just beware, you know, about, you know, this. It propagates fast. And those who desire to propagate a lie will try to flood you with lies until you begin to believe it. Be very careful. Guard your heart. Lastly, the thing we should do is expose the lie. Expose it by the truth. Respond with the truth. And this is what our job is is to respond by the truth. And the truth is enough to stand by itself. It doesn't need us to fight and defend or do whatever, but the truth is enough. Yes, we might be persecuted because of the truth, but the truth is enough. The truth will always conquer the lie, right? And this we saw, and of course, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He trampled down death by death, right? Uh, the Lord... When he responded, he said, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why do you strike me? He exposed the lie by saying, Why do you strike me if I spoke nothing evil? May God grant us the wisdom and protection of our minds and our hearts against the many lies that are you know, uh, circulating these days online and give us the wisdom to discern the uh, truth from the lie and the courage to follow the truth regardless of where it takes us. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.